here. All right. There we go. All right. Good morning. Um, Brad Roltkin here with the Fresno uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency investors. We are talking um, uh, crypto IRAs, retirement on blockchain today. Deborah is going to uh, be presenting uh, with us. Uh, she's provided a ton of good information in the past. Um, unfortunately, Beverly wasn't able to make it. She had a scheduling conflict. Um, but she sent out uh, some information that I shared with you guys uh, via email. If you haven't shared, or, or I'm not share, shared, but jumped on our email list, let me put a link to that in the chat. I'll do that here in a second. Um, so hopefully she'll be joining in the future. Um, but Deborah, I'm gonna just turn control over to you and you can share and, and jump in. I will uh, be kind of be able to monitor the chat and um, uh, the Google doc a little more than usual. Um, but if you guys have questions, just maybe post those in chat and or the, um, the Google doc, and then we can kind of post some answers or links, links there. The goal, goal of that Google doc is so at the end of the meeting, we have something that we can refer back to, you know, in a week, in a month, in a year, that kind of thing. So we've been doing that for the last couple months to try to, um, you know, kind of build, build on our knowledge base. And let's see. Okay. I think Deborah, you should be able to share. Okay. Yeah. Oh, got it. Thanks. All right. Yeah. And, and maybe just give us a little bit of background on, on Let where me know you when are. you guys can uh, see my screen. Yeah. Got it. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, maybe give us just a little background on where you are, right. you know, what you, what you do or uh, where you are on your crypto journey. Sure. Uh, so I'm Deborah Patterson and discovered uh, this Fresno group, which has been great because I've been fairly isolated up, up until... Uh, joining and meeting you guys. Um, uh, so I, I bought my first Bitcoin right before the last halving in 2020, um, which, which was a really big deal uh, because it was a lot of money back then. It was $8,500. <laughs> and, and that's what they say, right? That's the, the hardest decision is to buy the first one. So um, <laughs> So now I, I wound up buying some Ethereum last night <laughs> because uh, it looks like that has the same uh, trajectory and may even uh, accelerate along uh, those same lines as Bitcoin. I've been listening to Ralph Paul. Um, I listen to a lot of people now uh, in the space. And uh, one of the things I've recently done was to get a, uh, was to move my Roth IRA money. I only had one year of that. And I moved it to a crypto Roth IRA. Um, so I had done a little bit of research along those lines and, um, and then discovered what's called a backdoor Roth, which is what I'm going to be speaking to you today. And that's ways of funding the Roth uh, if you want to put more than the limit in or if you make more money than the, uh, the limit allows um, for, uh, for income. So, uh, so we'll make that clear. Um, so uh, Beverly was going to uh, do the presentation on the crypto IRAs today, but because she couldn't make it, I told Brad, I, I'll go ahead and I'll pull that info together also, rather than just talking about the backdoor Roth. So this presentation actually starts from the beginning. Uh, it explains, uh, it's just gonna go back to conventional, traditional IRAs, uh, compare that to the Roth, and then talk about how that's converted. All of that stuff now has converted to crypto IRAs. I'll get into that. And then at the very end, I've got a whole list of providers, including the one that I use. And, um, and then a couple of articles on what not to do with the Roth that I just, um, just embedded the links. And Beverly's information that she sent on the one crypto IRA company, I embedded those documents within this presentation as well. So everything's included, it's all inclusive. Okay. Awesome. All righty, so we'll start. I guess the first thing to say, um, and I made it clear on the, this, um, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm an, I'm an engineer. Um, I, <laughs> I work in a semiconductor industry as a consultant in technical sales and marketing. My last 
position was a VP of sales and marketing in uh, semiconductor packaging and test. So, uh, so crypto, uh, as far as it being technical, I'm not intimidated by it as far as it being financial and something I've never done. Yes, I'm intimidated by it, uh, but you know, I'll just jump right in. And you will, you know, I'll give you the information that I have learned to date. I'm not an expert. You know, you'll have to talk to a financial advisor, but at least you'll have a, a bit of a framework and, um, and you'll be able to go from there. Uh, you know, if you're interested in this, speaking with, with your accountant or, um, or the companies that, that are listed here. Okay, so um, first slide. Let's see if I can figure out how to move this forward. All right, so uh, first we're gonna talk about a Bitcoin IRAs. They were the first one on the scene, but now that's expanded to a number of different cryptos. Um, in fact, some of these companies are associated with exchanges. So you have access to any, pretty much any crypto uh, that's out there if you want. Um, there are three elements of a cryptocurrency IRA that you need to be aware of, which is unlike a traditional IRA at a brokerage. Um, first, uh, cryptocurrency IRAs are known as self-directed IRAs. And if anybody is here and has their own business, you guys probably already have a self-directed IRA set up. If you don't, it's something you'll definitely want to look into for tax purposes, um, both personal as well as business. Um, self-directed IRAs traditionally have included um, uh, real estate, precious metals like gold and silver, and uh, now more recently, cryptocurrencies. And when I say more recently, maybe since 2015, uh, a number of the older companies have been around. Um, this um, Retirement Industry Trust Association estimates only two to 5% of all IRAs are invested in alternative assets, alternative assets being non-equities, non-stocks and bonds. So even gold, silver is a very, very small number. But with the advent of cryptocurrency, from what I hear, speaking with some of the financial people, um, is that questions about Roth IRAs and Bitcoin uh, have just exploded. So this is going to be a year from now. Everybody's going to, I think, many people will know about this, many, many more than today. So there are three types, uh, three elements. You have the custodian. See, right now, if you have an IRA at Merrill Lynch or Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, those guys do all three of these. They are the custodian of your, um, of your money. They do the exchanges. They buy the stocks and bonds for you, um, and they store it. They hold it for you. So that makes it nice and easy. And they typically don't charge an extra fee. You, you may pay a fee for your account in general, but they're not going to heap an extra fee just for you having an IRA with them on top of that. So that is a difference. These companies, because they're independent and new, they're all going to have different fee, fee basis. And, and I'll review that. So the custodian uh, the providers that hold that RO, uh, IRA, they're responsible for the safekeeping of it. They have to make sure they follow IRS guidelines. Um, I expect to get paperwork at the end of the year from them, um, you know, if pertinent to withdrawing money um, if, and, and contributing money for that matter, uh, rolling over money into a Roth. Um, the exchange, you'll, you'll find one of two choices. Either the cryptocurrency will be available on their website and they only have a, maybe a limited amount of cryptocurrencies to choose from, maybe half a dozen, maybe two dozen, or you have other companies that have special relationships set up with the exchanges like Coinbase or Gemini or Kraken. And then you have access to any cryptocurrency that's represented on the exchange. So you know, depending upon what you want, you, you'll, you may want to shout it out. And then, um, of course, there's storage. And the storage is, you know, how, how well are you going to protect my cryptocurrency? And there are a number of guidelines um, in the financial world. This, this SOC type two right here on the very bottom right of the screen um, has to do with security audits specific to cryptocurrency. Um, 
The biggest deal here, and I mentioned it on one of the slides, but I'm going to say it up front. If I had to look at any of the cons, the pros versus the cons, there are a lot of pros. But the only con is that you're not going to have the same insurance that you have today at banks or brokerage firms. And individuals today are insured up to $250,000 uh, per, per account. And, um, and some Brokerage firms may have multiple insurance, so, so they may have uh, two, two banks insuring an account, which may give you 500,000. Um, Morgan Stanley does that, I know, on my accounts. But these guys, in the crypto world, what I'm told as I was, at, was calling some of these people and inquiring is that uh, you're not gonna see that kind of insurance. They're gonna advertise maybe $300 million of insurance, that sounds great, but that's for all of the assets per, per incident. And if they have 1.5 billion in assets, let's say, and they're offering 300 million as insurance to cover all of that, you know, you, you're only gonna see a small percentage of your money if something should fail. Now, of course, the blockchain is very secure and the reputable companies are going to hold your assets in cold storage. So, one would think that the um, ability to hack this would be very low, but, but that is the one thing that you have to be aware of, you know, when it comes to um, security of your, of your money, especially if you've got IRAs and, um, and this is your retirement money. You certainly don't wanna lose it when you're not in your twenties. <laughs> okay. So um, the pros and cons of crypto IRAs, of course, the advantages is that now you can get into crypto, right? And you can diversify out of stocks and bonds. And, and we're all in it because of the high returns. Um, and ideally, we'd like tax deferred uh, returns and or tax free returns. And, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, the, the other nice thing, if you're a trader, um, when you're trading, you're going to have to report all of your gains and losses for every single trade to the IRS. And if you're doing this within your IRA, that requirement goes away. It's just like the brokerage firm carrying your stocks on your IRA every time they switch things in and out. They don't have to report any of that. They just have to, you just have to report what you withdraw money, um, you know, from that. IRA. And it's the same thing here. You can trade within the IRA, you can buy and sell cryptocurrency, and you don't have to worry about reporting any of this to the IRS, not the trades anyway. Um, and then, of course, the capital gains that you accrue are not a, a taxable event. So if you were trading and let's say you were pulling out money because you want money to trade and you do have capital gains, then you have to pay that and then you don't get any um, compounding growth of that, that's gone, that went to the IRS. But, but if it's in the IRA, you know, you leave it there and then you've got, you've got that extra money. Um, on the disadvantages side, of course, is the volatility of cryptocurrency. Um, over the long term so far, it's been, you know, it just goes up. But over the short term, you know, you have to understand that it's going to be, have very large fluctuations. We all know that. Um, I talked about the fees. You, you're going to have uh, fees, and I'm going to review some of the fees with the different providers. So that, that is extra. Um, there are only certain affiliated currencies. And again, same with capital gains. If you have capital losses, you can't take those losses on your taxes either. You know, that's all kept within the, uh, within the umbrella of the IRA. And of course, you got one more thing to deal with, of course, one, one more piece of complexity. Okay, so we pretty much know why we why we would be looking at IRAs. Now, I wanted to first just explain in very simple terms the difference between a traditional IRA and a Roth IRA. So the traditional IRA is um, tax deferred. You know, we all we put money in it. So later when we take the money out, the Anticipation is that we'll be retired and we won't be taxed on it as highly as if we were working. And then we have that for retirement, we pull it out at a lower tax rate and we, and we use it. 
A Roth IRA, the, the Roth was introduced in 1997 um, uh, by Senator Roth. And uh, this was an option to allow, you know, middle income people to put money aside into an IRA, pay tax on it first, instead of when they withdraw it afterwards, with the benefit being, if you pay tax on it first, any growth in the Roth, when you take it out, is then tax-free. Now that's a really big deal. And I got a Roth many years ago, but because it was growing at the same rate as my other investments, single digit basically, you know, I didn't feel like it was that big a deal to have an IRA versus a Roth IRA because, you know, to me it was all the same. But if you're investing in crypto and you think that you've got an asset that's going to grow 10x in five years or 10 years time, all of a sudden that becomes a significant difference. Now, I may want to pay tax up front if I put $6,000 aside into that Roth, I may want to pay tax on that 6,000. If I think one day it's going to be 60,000 and later all of that is tax free. So any growth within a Roth become is tax free when you withdraw it. Okay, that's the, that's the main difference. So um, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so, um, I just uh, mentioned that taxes are paid on money going into the account so that future withdrawals are tax free and it's everything we're going to talk about is legal. I wanted to talk a minute about Peter Thiel. You guys know who he is? He was the co-founder of um, PayPal and now he's a um, chairman of Palantir Technologies. Uh, he's a billionaire, big, big billionaire. Um, and it's quite interesting. The uh, ProPublica, I don't know if you read the news, but ProPublica had leaked a number of tax, um, income tax statements from billionaires, Warren Buffett, Peter Thiel. And, um, and this got a lot of people up in arms when they started seeing all the loopholes that billionaires use not to pay taxes. And one of the, um, one of the bigger stories happened to be with Peter Thiel. And this is a really interesting one. So um, the Roths, you know, were created for the average person to, you know, save money now, withdraw tax-free. But here's what Peter did 22 years ago. Um, he's starting this, uh, this um, new company and uh, he talks to his accountant and he says, well, you know, what shall I do with the shares? Um, and right now, the, the shares of value, they put a value on the shares, and it was a tenth of a penny, 0 0.001, okay? And he, as one of the founders, um, was, um, was provided um, 1.7 million shares. So 1.7 million shares at $0.001 is 1,700 bucks. And uh, his tax accountant says, hey, if, the, if you're really gonna do something cool with this, something big with this, let's put it in a Roth because you can contribute um, a maximum $6,000 a year at your age. Um, this is well within the, the requirements and they probably, I don't know how they did it. They may have created an LLC that sits in a Roth. That's how it's done today. Um, and then the shares of the company are held within the Roth IRA. And then in 2020, in 2002, eBay acquired PayPal and Peter sold his 1.7 million shares, I think for $28 million. Now that $1,700 now became $28 million in the Roth. That means that if he withdraws any of that money, it's tax-free because he paid taxes on that 1,700 up front. And then what he did, he took $500 in the Roth and he invested it in Facebook. And then he made a whole bunch more money. And now his, um, IRA, his Roth IRA has $5 billion in it. Wow. Yeah, and that $5 billion is all tax-free whenever he wants to withdraw it, you know, based on the, the IRS uh, rules. 
Um, so um, the government, I, obviously, you know, I, I'm, I hear a story like that and I get pissed off at, at the IRS saying, hey, nobody knows what's going on with these guys. You're, you're the ones who have to be raising the flag to, you know, to update the rules. I don't blame Peter, you know, he's doing stuff that's perfectly legal, but, you know, let's, let's close in on that loophole so the next guy doesn't come in to take advantage, right? Anyway, that's what's happening now. And what will happen is that the government is looking into it and they'll probably put a cap on Roth IRAs going forward. You know, I've heard numbers like a million or three million, we'll see what happens. But, you know, going forward, there'll probably be some cap on a Roth IRA, but, um, but it will still be high enough or it should be, still be high enough, I hope, that, you know, people like you and me can still take advantage of it early on in this crypto cycle, because it still is very early on. And these things do take years to put in place where, you know, we can, we can benefit by having cryptocurrency held in Roth IRAs, and then all that growth is, is tax-free. And that's the whole point, really, of, of what I wanted to talk about today, but I'm gonna talk about all the IRA stuff. Okay, so that's Peter. And then I, I spoke about this, um, we'll just go forward. So here's the key difference between a 401k and a Roth. The traditional 401k, you're allowed deferrals of up to $19,500. And then if you're older, if you're 50, um, that goes up to 26,000. Plus any type of employer contributions. That's what's going on in, in your 401k. And the Roth, the Roth is limited. You get annual contributions of $6,000 and, and you get an extra thousand if you're 50 years old and above. And you can put that in the Roth. Now, there are ways around this um, to uh, fund more. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. The other difference is the income limit. And this is where the term backdoor Roth comes from. So um, with a traditional IRA, anybody with an earned income um, can contribute to their IRA. And, it's, um, and then uh, the tax deductibility depends on you and your spouse if you're married, um, the income covered by you know, your em employer sponsored. Um, now, on the Roth side, again, because they wanted to do this for middle income people, uh, there was a, an income ceiling in order to contribute. You had to, you had to earn under $140,000 if you were single, um, or, um, and then that was phased out um, you know, at $124K with the modified adjusted gross uh, income and married couple were limited to two hundred and eight thousand dollars. So some, so the, the wealthier were prohibited for, to contribute to the Roth um, because it was, you know, it was for uh, a perk uh, for less wealthy. But there is a loophole, and you may not be able to contribute to the Roth directly uh, if you earn a higher amount of money. However, if you have money in an existing IRA or an existing 401k, you can transfer money into a Roth. And that's what they call backdoor. Okay, so you're not, you're not limited to the, this income and you're not actually even limited to the amount. But when it comes to those things, you know, you're gonna to have to do that with a tax advisor, but I'll give you information regarding the concept. Okay. So back to a Roth, you can't directly fund it, but you can, you can move it. This is perfectly legal. Um, you know, it's IRS uh, acknowledged. Uh, it's actually not an official name. Backdoor Roth is, is, is an unofficial term for this, um, but it's a way to fund the Roth uh, if your income, you know, exceeds this. And, uh, What happened? She froze. Yeah, it looks like we lost her. 
Yeah. <clears throat> huh, let me try texting her. Sort of seemed maybe it was like a power issue or something. Laptop Who knows? Ran out of batteries. Networks are <laughs> network issues are funny that way. Oh, now it's bad if we lost your share. All right. I Give it a minute. I'm sure she'll return. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys um, done anything with crypto IRAs yet? I know we had a, a few people RSVP that I know had. Not yet. I've been looking into it, though. Okay. Yeah, right now I'm just oh, operating. Oh, hold, on, the... hold on. I think she's calling me. Give me a second here. Hello? Okay, she's coming back in. Um, I'm gonna run the PowerPoint from my end just to see if that helps at all. <clears throat> okay. So give her just a second and I'll get the PowerPoint and catch up. How's everyone's Saturday going? Good, I think I'd wanna be where you are, ZV. Where, where are you at? It looks like you're in Hawaii. <laughs> Let's go with Hawaii. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, when you're ready, when you're ready, Brad, I, I got uh, some extensive information on Roth IRAs. I just went through a whole process going into a trust with Broad Financial. Uh, I can tell you a lot about that. Okay. Yeah. In, if, if you want to email it to me, use info at uh, FresnoBitcoin.com or you can post it in that uh, Google Doc. Was That's why we have that. I don't know if you were able to get in there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw it, but you, you mentioned, uh, you just asked the question if anybody had the experience, but then, then Deborah broke yeah. off. And so, yeah, no, appreciate the input, um, on that. And I like your hat there as well. Oh, thanks. They had a baby <laughs> Theta all the way. More What's your hat? Coming. <laughs> it says Theta on it. Yeah. Okay. Theta. Yeah. All right. Let me try to catch up to the one that she was on. Here. How is Theta? Great. It's going to be even better. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, you're familiar with what they're all about. Not exactly. Okay. Some you want to check into that's for sure. They have patents on video things that are hooked in with Google, um, Samsung, Sony, the list goes on and on and on. And, and, uh, they got patents on a lot of the video stuff. It's a blockchain plus something you really want to check into They're uh, they're really pretty uh, up and coming. Is it on the they stock market? From, I'm sorry? Is it on the stock market? No, no, it's crypto. Oh, crypto. I'm sorry. This is all first the first time for me. <laughs> yeah, no. That's all, sounds interesting. Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty uh, fresh myself. I go back <laughs> to 2017 with Bitcoin IRA. I got a whole story about that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And it has um, been around since 2018. That's kind of surprising. <laughs> right. And theta, theta was at 10 cents not too long ago. And uh, the high was about 14 bucks. Wow. They got big plans, man. Big plans. Something everybody had to check into. Yes, it was. It was running uh, six cents up until December of last year. And then it hit its high um, this April at uh, 1590. Yeah, they're going to be huge in NFTs. Uh, they, they have uh, CAA, the the big uh, sports talent firm. talent firm. Yeah, they got Brady. They got everybody. Then they're dropping uh, Katy Perry NFT in the 
uh, September, or maybe they already did. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah it's can, something you might want to check into. Can you oh, guys Will see Gary this screen now? MT? Yes. All right, good. So, and I think if we switch. Ron, what do you mean Katy Perry NFT? Yeah, well, the, yeah, the, they're really going to be huge in F NFTs. These NFT things that uh, really, I don't see the value in them, but a, a lot of people do, and I'm just not educated enough in it to make an intelligent um, conversation about the NFT part. But Theta is going to be huge in the NFT, and I guess it's popular with um, uh, young people especially, and I really don't know, but it, she's one of the first ones to come out with an NFT through Theta. Theta's doing some with... Um, they have a Theta Warrior one. Um, anyway, some of them are going, you buy them for eight bucks and they're going for two grand. Oh, okay. NFTs uh, represent worldwide objects such as art, music, et cetera, which means right. you could actually essentially back your painting or whatever with a uh, crypto. Right. Yeah. All right, you back in, Deborah? Okay. Yeah. Um, and vice I versa. Can't, I can't get in on the computer, but I'm going to speak if everybody can hear me. And Brad, do you have the presentation that you can bring up? I do. I'm kind of, it's bouncing between windows. Um, let me, because uh, I have everything, it's not showing up on the, on, I got two monitors and it's not on the monitor I want it on. So let me move my other things over because I still want to be able to. Um, yeah, you can stop. See. Yeah, you can stop sharing and go back in. You probably just picked the wrong window. Well, it, 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 PowerPoint's cool because it gives me both windows, but it's like, you know, anyway, uh, give me just this here. Let's do. So we go back to share. So one of the questions that I'm hoping that this group can help me answer or find is um, I'm actually looking for an IRA that invests in crypto. Most of the things that I've been seeing is they want you to open up an investment account and then trade crypto within the account, like trade through their platform. And um, that is not my goal. So I'm just curious if anyone has firsthand experience with an actual IRA that invests in cryptocurrency. I, I don't know that one exists yet. There are ETFs that are being proposed. They have to go through, you know, SEC rules and regulations. But I haven't, I don't know if anybody else on the call uh, knows this, but I think we're too early for that. Okay, so then my options are, if I don't want to trade within the investment account, my option then would be to find an, an IRA that would allow me to purchase crypto and then hold it within that IRA. Right, and and I at I have slides and I've got a list of a bunch of companies that will do that. Okay, I'm excited. Thank you. Yeah, I would love some question. information regarding that too. Yeah, let's get back into it because um, we might be on a time limit here. So, <laughs> Deborah, am I on the right one? I got the back door wrong. Yeah, yeah. I I talked about most of this. The only thing I'm going to point out with the Roth is that any contribution, uh, and you can uh, look at the, the very bottom uh, sentence, any contribution that you put into a Roth that um, you, know, you don't have any penalty for early withdrawal if you're over 59 and a half, otherwise I think it's 10% like everything else. But when you contribute to a Roth, let's say I bought you know, crypto tomorrow, you do have to wait five years before you can withdraw it or you will pay a penalty like a regular IRA. But since this is, this is supposed to be for long-term investment, it is a retirement account. So five years is, is basically, you know, one Bitcoin cycle, right? Four years is a cycle. So, you know, whether you wait five years or whether you wait eight years, it's kind of expected. So, no, you know, I don't think that, I don't look at that as being a, a, a non-starter, for example. Um, so you go to the next slide, Brad. Okay, so this, this is just a slide that explains um, what had happened and uh, how the backdoor Roth was created. And um, I don't really need to go over it except for one, two, three. 
It's pretty easy. You contribute money to an existing traditional IRA, or you use one that you already have, an IRA or 401k, and then you're just going to roll that money over um, and, um, and put that in uh, another crypto Roth. Uh, a crypto IRA or a crypto Roth IRA. And then I have a number, as I mentioned earlier, I have a number of companies that, I, that have been identified that you know, run these types of, of accounts. And um, uh, the only thing you need to know is that you only have one Roth IRA conversion per year. So that means if you wanna contribute your six or $7,000, you could do it in December. You could do it again in January. You just can't have two per tax year, that's all. Uh, next slide. And then here's another thing that's very interesting. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it because you really have to talk to your tax advisor. This is great if you have your own business. Uh, it's, it's referred to now as a mega backdoor Roth. Turns out, and I, I learned out this with my business, that the IRS lets employees set aside up to $58,000 a year um, and, and more than that, if you are over 50 years old. So you can actually put a lot of money aside in, in crypto IRAs um, or even transferring it to crypto Roth IRAs, you know, beyond these limits. But I'm not going to speak to exactly what's involved. There's, there's a, a note on the bottom about ACP testing. Um, this is good for single employees. Um, I don't know the details of what that is. Um, but, you know, again, you'll, you'll speak to a financial advisor. I included all this stuff on the, the mega backdoor Roth or, or the Roth, mm. just so you know what questions to ask. I mean, this is what, you know, you're, the people you work with are supposed to be helping you with. This is, again, they, they'll know all about this. This is perfectly legal. It's not even, um, it, it's done all the time. This is very popular. $58,000 per year is... Um, you know, it's no surprise to, you know, anybody doing your taxes or anybody you're going to talk to. But I just wanted to identify that you don't just have to put the six or the eight uh, in. There, there are other things that you can do, with, you know, on the advice of your, um, you know, your tax people. Um, the next slide, Brad. Okay. Um, Okay, I just, this is just the advantages. We already spoke to this. You can go to the next slide. Uh, these are tax implications. Um, we're just gonna walk right through it. Next slide. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the providers because this is what you all wanna know. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so um, disclosure, uh, I use iTrust Capital. Um, I had looked into a bunch of these companies. Um, you know, I just picked iTrust Capital. They seem to have a pretty clear, nice um, platform. And I, I learned about it from a YouTube guy. Uh, his name is Robert. And uh, he's, he has a company uh, called, and a, and a YouTube site called Digital Asset News, D-A-N. And along with um, this guy at the Coin Bureau, I listened to Robert a lot. And he uses um, the uh, iTrust Capital, but um, uh, but let's take a take a quick look at these providers just so you can kind of get a feel on who does what. Now, I do want to point out there are two types of provider. Um, there are some companies like the ones I have listed here: Alto Crypto, Bitcoin IRA, uh, you know, all the way down to iTrust Capital. You put money into their company into the your Roth IRA and then you trade within it. Now if you really want to get fancy, you can have a self-directed crypto IRA with the formation of an LLC. And that that simply means you set up a Roth, you usually do this with a lawyer, but you set up a Roth IRA, you create an LLC within the Roth, which sounds counterintuitive. Because you'd think, oh, I set up an LLC first and then I fund a Roth. No, it's actually the opposite. But you set up this LLC within the Roth and then you can own all sorts of things. Uh, you can own real estate, precious metals, um, 
and I'll, I'll get it. I'll get into that with a reference. Um, you know, as we move through. So I listed a couple of companies that do uh, what we call, you know, allow for the formation of LLCs with checkbook control, where you can write checks in and out. Especially if you have real estate, you're going to be managing money, and this can actually be done within IRAs. Um, next slide. Okay, so so this is some basic crypto IRA info that you know I noticed with with all of the companies. Um, many of them that you're going to look at, they're going to offer traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, and as well as 401ks, and you can usually fund it from you know IRAs, SEPs, simple IRAs, um, but you have to check with your employer if you want to move money over. So recently. Uh, my husband has a 401k with his company, and I wanted to take advantage and, and put $7,000 in for 2021, and he just contacted the plan administrator. They wrote him a check, and it was fine, but not every plan will allow you to do that, so if you have existing 401ks, um, you, you have to check. With the IRAs, you can just roll those over. And um, these companies will help you do that. It's pretty straightforward. And the customer service, you know, I found is, is really good. Um, these companies typically um, only use US dollars. Um, you, can't, you can't transfer existing Bitcoin into these companies. Um, now with the LLCs, you, I think you can do that. You can do a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot more um, flexible. Uh, but uh, I just want you to know what the difference is. Um, of course, they obey all the rules and regulations of IRA and 401k accounts. Um, the biggest thing is the insurance that I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, presentation. So you just have to be aware you know, of that. Um, and not all of these companies offer telephone support. Some of them are just email only, but um, but I find that uh, some of the companies with email only are really great. They get they they call you back. Um, so uh, don't get turned off if uh, initially you have to contact them just through email. Um, next slide. Okay. So the first one I'm going to talk about is actually the last one on that that list of mine. It's iTrust Capital. And the reason why I'm talking about them first is because this is the one that, that I chose and I know the most about them. So on the right side of the slide, you can see that you can see the different cryptocurrencies that you're allowed to buy and sell within this uh, iTrust capital. So there's a, there's a nice amount of, and they're, they're the good, you know, they're the high end top, you know, top 10, top 15 uh, cryptos. Um, you do, I like iTrust Capital, you, you do have direct title to your assets. They charge a monthly fee. Now, all of these companies charge a monthly fee and iTrust Capital is not exorbitant. Um, they're not the cheapest, they're not the most expensive when you compare them with the others. But they did tell me, um, I was emailing them yesterday and, uh, they did tell me they're gonna phase this out at the end of the year, which makes them super duper competitive. Um, they're gonna make their money on the trading fees. They charge 1% on trading fees when you're buying and selling. Uh, they require an account balance of $2,500 uh, $2, minimum. Uh, you can trade these things 24 seven, just like you would on a regular exchange. Um, they've got great customer support. Uh, originally, I was told that the customer support was iffy, but my experience is that I send them an email. They'll call me, you know, at 530. And, you know, it's, it's fantastic. They get right back to me. And I'm assuming they would do that with everybody. I'm nobody special. Um, so a very good experience with their customer service team. These guys also offer gold and silver, physical gold and silver, uh, not an ETF. Uh, that's stored at the Royal Canadian Mint. So if you're into alternative assets like gold and silver, you can buy it through them too. And again, their prices are pretty decent, $50 over spot for gold and $2.50 over spot for silver. And of course they maintain good security 
protocol. And with the second page, I, I made this a little bit long so you can kind of see the, the types of things that I spoke with them about when I was setting up my account. And you can talk to any of these companies about this. Uh, they are currently, they currently reported um, in the first quarter of this year that they are now the largest IRA retirement platform in the US. Uh, Bitcoin um, IRA had, had held that number one spot. So truthfully, I don't know how these guys figure this out, but you know, one day Bitcoin IRA may you know, respond that they're the largest, maybe another day iTrust Capital responds that they're the largest, um, but you know, without splitting hairs, they're, you know, they're one of the larger, more reputable ones. They have uh, 1.5 billion in assets. They're only two years old. Uh, they only had a billion dollars in April. So you can see how, big, how quickly they're growing. Um, they store uh, the assets with, more recently with Coinbase Custody. They just announced that, I think a month ago. And they also use Curve. Um, PayPal is actually gonna be acquiring Curve, but they'll continue to use them. And as you can see, they've got insurance under both of these companies, 320 million for all the assets, for 1.5 billion in assets. Uh, and then 50 billion, that'll have to change, you know, at some point, they're gonna have to have better coverage. Um, but because they're now teamed with Coinbase, um, you know, you're gonna have access to, uh, to, to that, you know, all the bells and whistles with the security that comes with that. Um, the end of the year, they tell me that they're gonna be introducing more crypto choices. They wanna roll out staking services uh, while you have your, um, you know, for the crypto, uh, that would also include uh, interest uh, be and uh, they, because they want to roll out lending. And of course, the way you earn interest is if, if they lend out your crypto to somebody else, you can typically opt out of those uh, with certain services. And they want to roll out stop loss and limit orders, and they're improving their app. Um, they do not allow the swapping of coins. So you can't have Bitcoin and swap it into Ethereum, you, you have to actually buy, sell, buy, sell. And, um, and then I have my little disclosure on the bottom. If you do want to set up uh, an account, and remember that they're, they're going to get rid of this $30 per month fee by the end of the year. Um, but if you do want a discount for a month, you can use my referral code. And after you're all set up, you get your own referral code. And if you refer anybody else, they, then you get a free month and they get a free month. So that's, that's a nice little perk. Um, next slide. I have a question. Um, yeah. Do you know if that 1% exchange fee is pretty standard for these different uh, accounts? Yeah, some of it is higher, actually. You'll, you'll see. I, I try to make this as consistent as possible. And um, yeah, the 1% fee is pretty standard. Sometimes it's higher. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And so compared to Coinbase Pro, for example, which is 0.35 or Voyager, which is like 0.3 or 0.35, uh, that would be considered high. But compared to Coinbase, it's low. <laughs> so. So right now, these companies, they kind of put a stake in the ground because it, there's not a lot of competition out there from the brokerage firms, but there's, there's growing competition, as you'll see with all these choices. So, you know, they're going to have to, they're going to have to stay competitive. So that 1% right now is what the market will bear, you know, later, you know, that, that'll change obviously in four years from now. But, um, but right now that's, uh, that, that's not, un, it's not unusual. Um, okay. And then we have, uh, the next one is Alto. So Alto has been around for a long time as far as self-directed IRAs for alternative investments where you can put real estate in your IRA or art or, or, or venture capital even. If you're fundraising, you can actually do that in an IRA. It's amazing all the different things you can do within your IRA. And they most recently rolled out a product called Crypto IRA. So this is, a, this is new, it's a, so they're, they're in startup mode. So it's an older company who's been doing this for a while, but the crypto part is new. And uh, they're gonna off, offer the, the traditional the Roth and the SEP IRAs, but they do, they do not offer 401k plans. 
And you can see with the fees, um, their account fee is between $2 and $25 a month, depending upon how much money you have in there. And you can see they, they charge a 1.5% transaction fee. But even though that $25 a month may look cheaper, you know, than iTrust Capital, they also have a 1% annual custody fee, which iTrust Capital doesn't. The, the nice thing about iTrust Capital is their fees are on their website. And what I showed you is what you get. There, there's no hidden fees there, except I think these set up with 75 bucks, but, um, but they don't charge you custodial fees, um, you know, or, you know, anything on top of the monthly fee. In fact, if you're interested in silver and gold, you know, a lot of times if you're going to store this with Brinks or storage center, you're going to pay a lot of money uh, for that. That's included with iTrust Capital at that $30 a month. So if you're into the, you know, those types of investments too, iTrust Capital, is, I think is a really good choice. And again, this one's also 24 seven trading. Um, and they integrate with Coinbase. So you can see on the, the left, uh, their, their choices are a little more limited as compared to iTrust Capital, you know, but they have the basic, uh, you know, big popular ones. But here's the, here's the big thing. Because they're integrated with Coinbase, um, you can actually go to Coinbase. They'll, they'll have it set up where you can trade on Coinbase and then bring anything that Coinbase has over to your IRA. So, so it doesn't matter that they only have half a dozen um, choices right now because they offer you the option of using Coinbase and buying and selling you know, whatever crypto you want. Um, next slide. So this next slide is uh, the information that Beverly sent out was on Bitcoin IRA. And, um, and then that information is um, let's see, Brad, I don't see the embedded uh, files. I think it's in the original, but I took Beverly's PDF files and I embedded them in this slide. So you can, you can launch them right off of this slide and get the information, but oh, you can see. Like, like there was a link in this, on the slide? Yeah, there was. Okay. I, wonder if it got, I wonder if it got stripped out when I sent it to you. Yeah, I, it looks like there's something at the bottom. I'm not sure, but there's the links. Those three links are in the Google Doc, um, and they were in the email that went out. Oh, okay, um, good. So okay, guys... so so anyway, Beverly's stuff is is now embedded into the slide. Uh, so, you know, everything's together for you. And you can see the fees. This one's 240 annual fee, but they have a lot of hidden fees. Mm -hmm. uh, they have wallet holding fees and, and just a, a a ton of, of other fees that you can see in that document. Uh, it actually turns out they're a bit more expensive than the iTrust Capital, uh, in my opinion. And, um, but they also offer physical gold storage, not silver. And um, they also offer at this time interest income, uh, which you know, iTrust Capital does not yet. You know. Okay. I have some firsthand experience with Bitcoin IRA. I'm not sure if you, you want me to mention it now or- Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, well. It goes back to 2017. I um, bought Bitcoin and Ethereum through them. My daughter lived about a mile away from their office. I live in Fresno, they're in Sherman Oaks. So I go down there, I meet Chris Klein, the CEO, and I'm thinking they're all good, all up and up. Well, they were in partners with Kingdom Trust. Well, they had a divorce back in 19 and they left me with Kingdom Trust. And so Kingdom Trust is horrible. They quit uh, taking your phone calls. It's the email thing. And they may get back to you in a week if you're lucky. And so I wanted out of there. So I went to iTrust with that particular <laughs> one. But Bitcoin IRA, when I was going to, I was thinking about getting, taking it back to Bitcoin IRA, I called them up. They went 13 and a half percent just to put new money in there they don't mention that anywhere you call them up they'll tell you that and they say i said that's highway robbery and they said well uh, our security is so much better and uh, i don't know about that but they are the highest the unbelievable uh, to me I, I think it's highway robbery bitcoin ra i i went with um, broad financial i have two um um 
Roth IRAs with them that I transferred over. And then the iTrust, I moved in-kind transfer from Kingdom Trust to iTrust. I'm almost finished with that right now. So everything you said about iTrust, Deborah, is right on the money. They're, they're awesome. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I think I know all six of the customer service people now. <laughs> yeah, me too. And But Broad Financial is hooked in with Madison Trust, Solera Bank, and Kraken. Yeah. I tell you, the most smooth process I've ever been through was when I, I it cost you $1,200 to get it at a trust or LLC through Broad Financial. But man, oh man, what a beautiful, uh, seamless process between them. I have my own checking account, ATM card with Solera Bank. You can use your own bank if you want, but they use Solera. Anyway, I don't want to take up your time, Deborah. But no, no. Uh, I know a lot about Bitcoin IRA and all these processes with uh, uh, Broad Financial and all them. So yeah, in fact, I, I when we get to that, I'd like you to talk about it because there is a difference between the iTrust Capital, which is basic, right? You just get to buy and sell. You have your Roth, you have your IRA, but when you want to get, you know, a checkbook IRA or you want to trust or you want an LLC, that's not this. That's right. not broad financial and, and those types of companies. Right, because I, um, I, our broad financial in Madison wouldn't do in-kind transfers and there's no way I was gonna move my Bitcoin and Ethereum out of kingdom without an in-kind transfer. In right. fact, I got a six month free uh, at iTrust by in-kind transfer. Mm -hmm. And so if I would, I would have put it in my um, trust through Broad Financial if I, um, if they would have done in-kind transfers. Yeah. But since they didn't, I trust is a beautiful alternative. Yeah. And I think you need to know both, both types of companies. And I like to be a little diversified too. You know, I, I, I don't know if I want everything in, uh, in, in one thing, you know. Yeah, I completely agree. Cool. So thanks very much for the comments on Bitcoin IRA. Um, oh, you bet. They, they advertise that they're like, you know, top-notch security. They make a really big deal out of that. Um, but, you know, I don't know that it's enough to offset, you know, some of the other benefits. Yeah, um, well, that's like you mentioned, Deborah. Like you mentioned, two, what, 500 million for billions of dollars worth of assets. Everybody kind of thinks, I think, unless they check into it, that, oh, man. It's 250 million on my account. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, no. Us little guys aren't going to get a penny. Um, yeah. So Bitcoin IRA is a lot of hype. And uh, I'm not saying they're not good at what they do. You're just paying through the nose. I mean, 13.5% yeah. to bring new money in. Oh, yeah, you great. have to keep, they, they have, and that's why with the fee basis, you know, that I included, that there's a lot of fees there. Um, and I think you're right. And I would advise for me, for me, I will be putting, you know, multiple, I will have multiple Roths at different companies to spread things and spread risk. Right. Good point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh, so we'll go to uh, the next uh, slide. Brad. Okay. So this one is um, uh, also Bitcoin IRA. We'll, we'll just skip that. You know, people can read through that. Uh, the next one is Bit IRA, um, and you'll see here uh, it is a minimum opening balance of five thousand dollars. You can see the fees listed. Um, they again one hundred ninety-five dollar maintenance fee, and then a 005 percent monthly storage fee, based on what you hold versus a flat fee like at iTrust Capital. So again, that you know those fees can add up. Um, now here's the other thing. They talk about like 0% liquidation fee, um, but uh, the custodian uh, is equity trust. So then you get additional fees charged through equity trust. So I, yeah, again, you have to be really careful with all these companies. That's why I started with, you know, who's the custodian, who's doing security, who's doing the exchange? Because when you have multiple companies that are involved, that you know they may claim a certain zero fee, but then you've got their partner charging fees. So yep. it's not yep. necessarily you know uh, it's not open kimono. Yeah, you're right. You know what, Deborah? I, I have uh, a relationship with Equity Trust too. <laughs> I I uh, just moved it out of there because they're highway robbery too. Not quite <laughs> as felonious felonious as uh, Bitcoin IRA, but almost. 
um, that's where they get you is that that holding fee, you know, that 0.5 right. percent per month. You, you get a million or two dollars in there. You're talking some big money. Yeah. And then if you if you're not paying the fees on your credit card, they start eating up your crypto. Yeah. I lost and quite frankly at this days. point. Yeah, at this point, this is why it's good to have trusts and, and businesses, because then you can take these fees off on your business if you hold well, it in an LLC. And that makes right. sense. Yeah. And finding companies that have low fees like uh, yeah. I trust and, and Broad Financial and all these others, once you get past the, the fee of Broad Financial of setting it up. But yeah, it's just a uh, highway robbery on these. And it, I, when I, I didn't know when I first bought in, in 17, I just wanted to get a position. I didn't know enough about it. I just knew it enough to buy a position in these things. And they ate up almost point, let's see, it was exactly uh, 0.15 of my Bitcoin, which is worth a lot of money right now. It wasn't back yeah. in 17, but in the fees being charged. So now I switched all that where any fees come off of my credit card, not eating up my crypto. So yeah, yeah Bitcoin IRA, exactly. equity trust, highway robbery. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the next uh, slide, Brad. Okay, Black Mint. Uh, another one, you'll notice the opening balance a few bullets down, $10,000. Now, there's the website's very scarce <laughs> on the details. Um, obviously, I, I guess they're going for high income people. Uh, they have very high fees. You'll notice the 15% transaction fee with discounts based on volume. But, you know, you were, the, the other gentleman was asking me about 1%. And how does that compare? This is 15 <laughs> on the transaction fees, along with 2% purchase transactions and 1% sell transactions. Again, equity trust is a custodian. Okay, so so a heads up uh, there. Um, Brad, next slide. And then this is equity trust. You can work with them directly. Um, and then I, I again, I have the fees. This one is 3.5% um, purchase fee, 1% sell fee. And their fee schedules are very complex as, as we've been speaking <laughs> to that. Okay, Brad, next slide. Okay, so these um, crypto IRAs, um, I think if we have time, Brad, I'll, I'll actually show mine so people can see, you know, how easy it may be. I'll see if I can get back on. Um, but if you're doing something like a trust or an LLC, uh, you're talking about a self-directed IRA with checkbook control. Um, next slide. And and Deborah, then, real quick, real quick yeah, on that, yeah. because I just set all that up uh, in the last month. And you, you do have uh, checkbook control. And um, oh, I lost my point. Ah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll, That's okay. I'll you can jump right yeah. back in. I'm just going to, I started with this slide. The company is called Directed IRA. Now, Directed IRA, this is a company founded by two lawyers that have been into crypto for a while, and they're on YouTube. And the reason why I'm, I'm shooting with this slide is because they have a whole bunch of tutorial um crypto IRAs, these self-directed IRAs on YouTube. So you could just listen to them. You'll, you'll go all the way to the bottom of this slide and I've got their, their names. So just, just put, the, put their names on YouTube and I put two links in to get you started. And they will tell you all about these um, self-directed IRAs and Roth IRAs and how to set them up, how to set up the backdoor Roth IRAs if you want to do that with something more complex, like if you've got a company or a trust. So I would say, you know, start with these guys. And then what I did was I kind of wrote down um, through one of their videos, the steps, <laughs> just to kind of give you a feel of what it takes. They charge about 800 or a thousand bucks to get this set up for you. And Directed IRA has a relationship with Gemini um, you know, the, the Gemini exchange. So you can actually buy and sell through Gemini. You can also buy and sell through any other crypto exchange like Coinbase or anything out there. Um, it's just that sometimes it can be a little more complex, a 
according to these guys, because when you have an LLC, you have to have different paperwork set up with the exchanges. But they've already they've already kind of short tracked that with Gemini uh, through a relationship they have with them. Deborah, real quick, I remember what it was. The, dif the, dif the difference between an LLC and a trust in California is eight hundred dollars a year. Uh, you'd have to pay to California yes. if you do an LLC. They talked about That's that. That's what I. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They talked about that, and they also talked about people how they want to get around that, and it's so complicated and it, it's such a hassle. It's like just pay the eight hundred. <laughs> Mine was easy. My simple as can be. But I, I I chose the trust. And with Broad Financial and their their group, seamless, absolutely seamless. Yeah, and let's go to the next one because I think that's coming up. For, uh, oh, I got IRA Financial first. So IRA Financial is like Broad Financial. Um, they also have a relationship with Gemini. And let's go to the next next one. So you've got like three choices here. Oh, where's Broad Financial? Oh, oh, there it is. Okay, and there I didn't I didn't leave them out. <laughs> so, so there's Broad Financial, and um, I I apparently I think it was fourteen hundred to open the account, and uh, about twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Okay. Um, then maybe they maybe it went up recently, or um, but we'll um, but anyway. So um, next slide. Okay, and then the IRI financial trust is just another one. So now in the appendix, we'll go to the appendix. Next slide. So the appendix is just for your reference. It's a, it's a little comparison I pulled off the web of Roth IRAs and traditional IRAs in terms of contribution limits and income limits. Uh, you can go to the next slide, Brad. You can see age limits, tax credits, tax treatment. Next slide withdrawal rules, minimum distribution, and any extra benefits. Okay, so that's a quick kind of cheat sheet on the, the, you know, the comparison. And then there are two articles here when it comes to Roth IRAs um, about how not to screw up. <laughs> so I included that as well. Excellent. And Deborah, is it okay if I share this um, PowerPoint with the- Yeah, yeah, it's for the group. Okay, great. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll get. I'll probably turn into a Google Doc and share that, or we'll. we'll I'll send mm -hmm. out a link and all that. So, I got a couple of questions on that. So good, thank you. Yeah. So the bottom line, I I guess the the message here, the message here is to take advantage of the Roth IRA. If you if you think you have a high potential growth asset like crypto, put it in a Roth. And, and max it out if you can. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Any any questions? Uh, actually, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see more of my screen here. Did, uh, did iTrust Capital give you any ETA on when they're going to eliminate those fees? Yeah, they said the end of the year, but they don't, they don't know what month, for example. They just want to have it done before they get into 2022. That's really good news. Um, I yeah. think I might wait for that. No, honestly. don't wait. Don't wait. Here's <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you why I say don't wait. Um, unless you already have your money in a crypto Roth, because you want, you want to take advantage of the tax, not paying tax on gains. So, for example, let's say Bitcoin's $45,000 when you set up your crypto Roth. And then it goes up to 55. Now that $10,000 gain is shielded from taxes, you know, because you pay the tax up front. So if you wait till the end of the year, when you eventually buy your Bitcoin, you're going to wind up buying at a higher price. And then you're going to lose out on the tax gain you would have if you bought it earlier and with all that growth. Does that make sense? All those fees, uh, I think I, with how many fees there are, like it doesn't make sense for me to even do it at this point. Um, uh, with how small of a percentage of my portfolio, like overall crypto gotcha. is, but mm. um, it probably, the fees would eat up my whole, you know, 
Oh, I see. Yeah, putting... yeah. So thirty dollars, thirty dollars a month is would be too much. Um, yeah. Unless, unless you can sign up and give your um, reference code to a bunch of friends, and then you get you can you get a month free for each one. <laughs> Yeah, they had that. They had that discount for every referral. They give you a month free. Um, yeah, and Karen anyway. had Karen had a comment that a lot. This is a lot of information. Yeah, don't feel bad, Karen. Crypto, just in general, is a lot, and that's why we try to get together once a month to kind of help each other and you know bring each other up to speed because it's literally impossible to keep up with the just what's changing and what's new coming out and that kind of thing. So. A, a, don't feel bad, and B, join us as much as possible. You know, we try to help each other. Okay, yeah, I feel like I'm swimming right now in all that information. Yeah, but remember, it took me months. It took me a couple of months to actually, you know, pull that information together. Yeah, that was really it, helpful. Thank you so much, Deborah. It, there's, well, I have this book right here. The first guy I talked to at Broad Financial, his name's Jeff Astor, and he works for them. He's been with them a long time. He wrote this book. You can get it on Amazon. It's called The okay. Ultimate uh, Self-Directed IRA by Jeff Astor, A-S-T-O-R. Great book, about 65 pages. It'll break down everything for you. And he, right. he oh, works at Broad okay. Financial. Yeah, so this, this is a great book really helped Thank me a lot mm -hmm. excellent all right would you would you type that into the chat I, and i added it to the google docs the okay google good because i'm not sure how to do all the adding stuff yet I'm, all right i'll get in the google doc on chat and then type yeah okay yeah i'm not, i don't see a chat on here uh on my zoom it's on do the you, google part do you see the bottom of your screen where you have all of the tools and you see share screen in green Okay. Yeah. Share content. Okay. Okay. So then to the net, to the left of it is a little box that says chat. Oh, mine doesn't say that. I'm on my iPad. It says uh, stop video next to it. Participants. Apple, to see. Everything up. Oh, oh yeah. you know what? I got it. Chat right here. It's, it was under more. I couldn't see it until I clicked on it. Okay. So then put it there. Okay. I yes. got you. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Excellent. You're welcome. I think if you want help buying better technology. Um, I'm yeah. adding my information to the list. I can walk you through several better things than Apple. Okay, I, cool. I think and Let's, you'll spend less. Okay. Did Latricia have a comment? I think it unmuted there for a second. Jump in if you still had a comment or question. Oh. oh, thank you very much. The information was useful. I'm looking forward to looking at those resources. Um, I think I'm going to check out um, the iTrust. Was it? I trust it, that's the one that's connected to Kraken and you can trade. Uh, I trust uh, capital is not, but they have no. about um, a dozen uh, uh, cryptos. The one connected to Kraken uh, would probably go through some of the self-directed, uh, more complex, you know, companies offering more complex products. Right. Kraken's oh. through, uh, um, Broad Financial, Madison Trust, mm -hmm. uh, that scene. I have cracking through them, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll do a little bit more research and see uh, where to go with that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I tried to list the exchanges, uh, you know, where appropriate. Um, Good. Thank you. All right, and Karen, you had her hand up. Congratulations on using the technology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Um, Hopefully I'll frame it right. But I was reading the other day that with the new infrastructure bill that they're putting out, that um, there are some issues in there that pertain to crypto and taxing and control via the, I guess, the financial whatever in the government. So I just want to know how is that going to affect everybody if they do have changes where they're going to start taxing and yeah, we can only speculate at this point, you know, kind of thing. And and they throw up things to, you know, see what sticks. Um, so I don't, I don't think we can do much good Start until opening I, up companies yeah. overseas. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm not kidding. 
Yeah. All of the I mean, loopholes like, billionaires use, everyone yeah. else should start using them. Because, because it seems like the moment they little... do that, they will stop creating yeah. frivolous laws. <sighs> it seems like every time the little people try to get ahead, they always try to block us. That's the wrong way to view it. Yeah, once okay. once something comes out and you know is in place, then we can kind of attack it. But the way they right change now. things, it you know we we just have limited time. So, but good good question for sure, for sure. No matter what, there is always a way to accomplish your goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Start right, doing right. everything that way. What is the path? Yeah. It'll change, and maybe you need to reorganize. But one way or another, you will find a way to do whatever you want. Cool. There's no way is way. And lim the only limitation is no limitation. Hey, Renee, we got you back. Any comments or questions on the crypto, or the IRA stuff? So I thought Deborah did an amazing presentation. <laughs> was like, I really appreciate all that time. And, but I'm wondering, okay, what if you're 65, then what do you do? I mean, do you still do this? Well, Renee, I'm Why not? Renee, You'll I'm live 62. at least another 50 years. Well, I know. <laughs> but so, Deborah, you're 62, huh? Yeah, I, I'm 62. And I feel like this is without going crazy risk, right? Mm -hmm. I feel that you have to diversify your portfolio at least responsibly, even if you take 5% of your portfolio and you've got equities, maybe you have bonds, maybe you have real estate, what, whatever it is, this is a diversification. And I feel that it's really important, you know, even conservatively, you take 5% because quite frankly, in five years or 10 years, you know, if you feel that there is a 10X or 40X potential, then that's what you do. Um, but you do something that's reasonable for your comfort level, your risk level. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I am doing 5% now, cause I'm, but I've got like Coinbase pro or, you know, and so that's what I was doing. So maybe I should be researching, should I make it an IRA instead? The money that I'm putting into that. Well, if you make it a Roth IRA, you don't have to pay tax later. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, since you can't take it out for five years, that's, that's what you're doing. You're doing it right. for when, you know, the, the latter half of your retirement. Right. Yeah, because I'm not planning on using it anyway. It's just a long-term investment. So yeah, and so to learn. Yeah. There you go. Okay, thank you. Hey, Brett. Yeah. Could, could, you, could you put up the spreadsheets everybody knows? Oh yeah, I cannot edit like. the spreadsheet to add my information. Uh, I think I I, sh I gave you access, so you, you should be able to now. But yeah, let me open that up. Oh, Deborah's back. I I'm on my phone. <laughs> I just realized I can put the video. <laughs> the engineer. But this is a weekend. She doesn't have to think as much. All right. Uh, I'm an engineer too. So we're both of the same mind. Yeah. All right. Let me get this tab up here and I'll share, I'll share the screen here. Okay. Yeah. So this is what hopefully you guys can see that now. And mm -hmm. staff is adding his info right now. So feel free to, um, you know, add your own info to this and, um, you know, reach out to each other and communicate from there. So you sent this out, I thought, and there was a link that then I put my name in. Hmm. Okay. I think that was a mailing list. I think. There's a mailing. Yeah. <laughs> I, Renee, I think you, sh I think I gave you permission to add add your info to this so if you go to it you should be able to just type in okay the stuff it's just like we're sharing one big spreadsheet right okay thanks all right yeah and 
the stuff I'm going to be working on next uh, is um, for taxes, uh, like Coinly and Accointing, the, these companies. So you can do tax reporting if you are buying and selling. Yeah, we had talked about that back in January um, and probably maybe do that again in January when tax time rolls around. Yeah, and maybe that was important because of the um, uh, the tax loss harvesting that I was telling you about. Right, right. So I, that's important for anybody who's new. If your cryptocurrency is tanking, if your Bitcoin is tanking, then you, you sell it for less than you made on it and buy Ethereum. <laughs> let that run, let them both run back up together. <laughs> yeah. But again, that's not uh, financial advice. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's opinion. Yeah, we're just here to kind of help each other out. So uh, good deal. All right. Any last minute questions anybody else had? And again, we'll make this recording available and the presentation. And hopefully everybody's gotten into the member contact list as well. But yeah, I just wanted to say um, along what Deborah was saying, I, I think it's important to find a good uh, CPA and a good attorney that's in crypto for future once you know, if these things go where we hope they go, it'd be good to find out how to shelter, how to do things that real rich people do that uh, to avoid some of the pitfalls. And, and a, an attorney would be nice too, just to know who they are and so on. So if anybody knows of any, you know, I'd, I'd appreciate it. If, like if you posted Deborah or whoever posts that, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. And that might be somebody in Colorado because, you know, they're yeah, that's cool. cutting edges, you know, and it doesn't matter because we're still dealing on a national federal level as far as the taxes and laws yeah. and that kind of thing. So good point. And Ron, any other info you had that you can just email me and I'll add it to the Google Doc if you didn't have. Uh, OK, yeah, I was able to do it on the chat. I, I'm not quite to the Google Doc yet, if that's different. OK. Um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that, Brad. Let but yeah, talk. and anybody wants to reach out to me, I'm not sure how to put my number on there yet or whatever. I, I went through this whole process in the last two months from Broad Financial to Madison Trust. They're in the same office there. They work together and they work with Solera Bank and then with Kraken. Seamless. It was so easy. And, and then I, you have a choice of LLC or, uh, um, or a trust. I went with the trust because of California. But it's just amazing how smooth it was because, as everybody probably knows, this thing's not as easy as you think to get these things set up. And they were just wonderful. The customer service was was top shelf, man. And, and I have no connection with them other than being burned by Bitcoin IRA and all those equity trust and Kingdom Trust. These guys are the real deal. Good. And yeah, I no, trust. that feedback is that feedback, you know, and experience is super valuable. So. Totally yeah, anybody wants to contact me, man. Uh, I don't know how I can get my number. I'll get it to you, Brad, I so guess. Type, I type your name right into the chat box with oh, your chat. There phone you go. number. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, ZV, we'll Hawaii there. boy. Thank you. Hey, Brad, how do I save this document after I've added my information? It, it automatically saves every couple seconds. So it. So you don't have to do anything. Just okay. literally stop typing for five seconds and it'll be saved. Uh, Frank, I see your question about the uh, Nezra Jezra quantum financial system. You know, again, until it's all that's in place and legal and, and all that, you know, we're not going to know. So we'll you know, keep an eye on that too. Um, see if there's any other questions on here. Good. Okay. All right, guys. I, we will call it a, uh, a, um, a meeting uh, next month, September. I'm super excited. We're going to hear a guy that's launched a couple uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, I, I don't know how big of the team he's, he's been, but he's been a big part of it. And so that's going to be super interesting to hear. And then for October, we're going to talk about trading. Um, I think it was last month, you know, we, that call almost turned into trading. So we're going to do a whole call in October on trading, you know, trading um, systems, these bots, any, you know, strategies that kind of thing if you have anything that you want to contribute or add to a list ahead of time feel free to email just info at fresnobitcoin.com um and we'll we'll get that added and and I, that should be an awesome meeting as well in october 
So until then, Deborah, thanks again for the, all that work on that uh, research and the PowerPoint. I know that will uh, help help us. Um, um, sure. Have you sent the uh, PowerPoint presentation? Nope, because we're still in, you know, I'm trying to pay attention to the meeting here. So <laughs> I'll, I'll wait till after that. And then okay. the recording gets, you know, <laughs> compressed and decompressed and whatever, and then I can upload that as well. So just give me okay. a little time, a little time. Thanks for the reminder, though, for sure. Wonderful. So, all right, guys, have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll uh, we'll see you in a month here and, and online or by text or forum or whatever between now and then. Take care. Thank hey, you. Thanks a lot, guys. This Thank has been you. great. First time. Thanks. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Brad. Yeah. Um, I'd love to actually add to